Again, I'd like to welcome you. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, thank you for, uh, again, the, the guests who are with us. Uh, what a blessing it is uh, on this special night uh, to have Pastor Jones, Miss Jones with us. What a blessing. What a blessing. All right, we're going to do service just a little bit different tonight. So we're going to start uh, very briefly with our prayer list. So let's start and let's go over our prayer list. As I, as I mentioned, we're going to uh, do it in an expedited uh, fashion this evening. Uh, we have much to pray for, and uh, we have uh, wonderful answers to prayer that we can praise the Lord for. So as these men are passing them out, does anyone have a praise to report anything that the Lord has done in your life this week that has been a blessing you'd like to share with us this evening? Anyone at all? Amen. All right. Well, let's look over our list then. Uh, let's, of course, be praying for our country, for our president, for our uh, leaders, uh, police, military, uh, the youth of America, the abortion situation that's uh, riddling our country. Uh, let's pray for all of our church ministries. Let's pray for VBS. Uh, it'll be here before we blink next week. Uh, let's pray for our church, or for our family and friends that are lost. And let's continue to pray for Israel and Ukraine. Let's also pray for all of our missionaries. Uh, they certainly stand in need of our prayers. They're out laboring uh, diligently for the Lord, and they certainly need our prayers. I, I had a great conversation this week with Brother Badgett, and uh, there uh, he's as, as excited as he's ever been. They're serving in South Africa, so just continue to pray for him. Uh, he, he did give me an update on their visa status. It's still hanging in the balance, so just continue to pray for him uh, and their needs there. Hospital surgeries and test section. Uh, be in prayer for Brother Matt Perdue as we I look forward to hopefully, Lord willing, some of these obstacles to be removed. Uh, continue to pray for Becca Brinkley. Uh, Brother Paul Hooker, uh, listen, we need to diligently pray that the Lord would open a door of opportunity for uh, he to receive the surgery that he needs. Uh, we're praying for that. Brother Ricky Stone had an appointment today. Continue to pray for him with his, uh, just he's in a lot of pain. Uh, Brother Garrett Sr. received a good report, but still need to pray for upcoming tests and, and things that are down the road. Kevin Rogers, Glenn Francis, Susanna, uh, Sister Jetty Fry. I'll give you an update on Sister Jetty. She is now under hospice care. Uh, so tonight she's at Woltz up in Dobson, uh, but Lord willing, she'll be back home tomorrow. So just pray for Sister Jetty, pray for the family uh, during this difficult time. Uh, Pete Marion, I'll give you an update. He's home. Uh, Brother Paul was sharing with me. He suffered, though, a second heart attack uh, while in the hospital. So let's continue to pray for him. Gary Lawson, Jake Bowen, uh, Sister Audrey Stone. She's going to have another appointment on the 19th. Uh, Kim Slaughter, Lucinda Smith, Wayne Martin, uh, Brother John Racy. Uh, there's Sister Jetty, David Cheek. And Carrie Connor, Carrie Connor is in the ER tonight, so pray for her. She's uh, having extreme pain in her abdomen, so I pray for her during this difficult time as well. Under the health section, does anyone have an update on anyone under the health section? Sister Diane? Yes, ma'am. Sure. Sure. Oh, my. Sure. Well, we will, we'll pray for him in the meantime for his situation there. Uh, anyone else? Update on the front section here, whether it be in the top or the bottom. Anyone at all? Name update? Yes, ma'am. Sister Ann. Tomorrow. Okay. We will certainly be praying for that for tomorrow. Anyone else update on the, this front section? I will say that we can remove Sister Jessica Grubbs from the prayer list. She's doing some better. Sister Leona? Okay. Let's pray for Sister Autumn tonight. And Sister Stephanie? Okay. Let's continue to pray for Valor Nagel, this infant uh, who's back in the hospital. Anyone else on the front section tonight? All right, on the back section then, long-term issues. Does anyone have an update, addition, subtraction uh, from this section this evening? 
when you want it all. All right, what about the cancer section tonight? Does anyone have an update? Brother Jimmy? Okay. What was that first name again, brother? Shelby Jean. Shelby Jean Millsap. Under the cancer section. Anyone else have an addition or an update? All right. <clears throat> Under the bereavement, we're praying for the Derek Burge family, if you would add that name. And also the Helen Bowman family. Derek Burge family, Helen Bowman family. Anyone else have a bereavement this week? All right. Uh, travel section. We're praying for Adriana Culler and for Pastor Ms. Jones as they'll be traveling earlier this week and then later this week as well. Anyone else traveling that we know of that needs prayer? Sister Leona? Adriana, we can remove. All right. Any other updates on this back section tonight? Additional requests, we're praying for the Lineback family, Eli and Nicole Purdue, Linda, and the Color family, Phil and Bill Bernstein, Robbie Barton, Michael Stone, the Love family, Bradley Marshall, Wayne Bolden, the teachers, and the homeless uh, in our area. Unspoken requests then on this side of the church tonight, Sister Diane, Brother Jimmy, Sister Leona, Brother Bob. Sister Doris, Sister April, Sister Elaine Venable, Brother Robert Venable, Brother Shane, and unspoken request on this side tonight, Brother Jack in the back, Garrett Sr., Sister Bobby, Sister Stephanie, Brother Garrett Jr., Brother Matthew, Sister Judy, Sister Rebecca. All right. We have much to pray for, so let's be prayer warriors this week, praying for all of these needs that the Lord would uh, see fit in, in His will uh, to answer those needs. All right, what we're going to do at this time, we're going to have a couple specials, and we're excited. Our young people, the Barton family, are going to share a special, and then Sister Rebecca, uh, right to follow. I feel like I'm standing on a mountain. Trying my best to see the right road. Glad I've got a leader for directions. He follow, I follow him. He tells me where to go. It's a big, big world. There's so much in store. A big, big world with a lot of things to explore. I don't know what all I'm getting, but I know what I've got. It's a big, big world, but I've got a big, big, I've got a big, big God. I know there are many things against me. I'm sure I will face a few tomorrow. But I've got a power living inside me. It's greater still than anything I know. It's a big, big world. There's so much in store. A big, big world with a lot of things to explore. I don't know what all I'm getting, but I know what I've got. It's a big, big world, but I've got a big, big, I've got a big, big God. I can't see what all he's planned as he teaches me to become a man. But I can see he's all I need and I'll go where he leads. It's a big, big world. There's so much in store. A big, big world with a lot of things to explore. I don't know what all I'm getting, 
but I know what I've got. It's a big, big world, but I've got a big, big, I've got a big, big God. It's a big, big world, but I've got a big, big, I've got a big, big God. Yeah, I've got a big, big, I've got a big, big God. Like a babe when he cries for his mother, like a child I was helpless alone. Then I met the master, now I am one of his own. For all things were changed when he found Like a blind man who walks in the darkness, I had longed, I had searched for the light. Then I met the Master, now I walk no more in the night. For all things were changed when He found me. But it's there for you. Amen. Appreciate Amen. It hasn't you, been open. Not open. Right, no. yes. Amen. 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 We're delighted to be here with you this evening, and uh, we met some new folks, and we're so thankful to the Lord that the work at um, Faith Baptist Church continues to grow and to go on for the Lord. Amen. And I just want to thank you for the monthly contribution to the building fund that. Um, we have been collecting down at the Coastline Baptist Church in Shalote, North Carolina. And uh, so I just commend you. I thank the Lord that you have, have stuck with the stuff. And um, you have been faithful and steadfast in serving the Lord here. And that's great. It's a little bit of difference. Several of the people have been asking me, they said, well, how are things going down there? And I said, well, let me tell you what happened. They set the woods on fire. Well, it didn't take me a whole lot of time to realize, hey, you know, the deer and the dogs and the bears and everything, they'll get out. And so I told my wife, I said, we got to get out of this place. I said, I can't breathe. <laughs> so uh, they, it was a controlled burn that got out of control is what happened, I believe. But uh, at any rate, um, they do have it. Uh, they said 50 Two percent. I don't know how in the world they got that calculated like that. Fifty-two percent, you know, was a uh, control now. But uh, anyway, I looked out the window there on a Sunday morning, and I could not see the shrub. Could hardly see the shrub there in the in in the front yard. Couldn't see the neighbors. Couldn't see across the street, all the houses and so forth, and. Um, I told my wife, I said, listen, we got to get out of this place. I said, let's pack it up quickly and let's take off and head to the mountain. But what we've been trying to do and waiting for, my brother Jerry, you know, has Alzheimer's and um, uh, we have been trying to wait to get the time, get things arranged where that we could come up and see him. And he is uh, no doubt, you know, in uh, latter stages. It actually, has uh, uh, the hospice care coming in, and um, I had the most fun. I thought I would. Uh, uh, I thought I'd try to encourage him a little bit, and I went in. And I said, "Jerry, how you doing?" And um, he said, "Okay." And he's just sort of mumbling like. And I said, 
Well, let me tell you, I thought I'd try to encourage him. I said, well, let me tell you, I said, you, I said you're really looking good, you know. And uh, he said, I know, I'm a handsome dude. <laughs> and I said, well, he just tell it like it was, you know. I'm a handsome dude. So anyway, um, we have been uh, tuning in to your Wednesday evening. Uh, I reckon it was Sunday morning, live stream. And um, I reckon I owe Brother Mike Nelson and Kyle, who is not here, but um, I reckon I owe them an apology because uh, on Wednesday nights when we would tune in, we would say, look, I said, here's, here's Matt and Jessica. And I said, this is wonderful. Leona was back, you know. I said, thank the Lord for that. Preacher Woods made, this is his trekking, second trip back, you know. And we thank the Lord. Preacher Wood is doing better out of that excruciating pain. And God just answered prayer, and we thank the Lord for that. It's just a joy to have him here. And he was such a blessing when we were here. I just uh, always like to hear him pre uh, preach. I like to hear him pray as well. Amen. And I believe he had, I believe he's got a, some clout with the Lord, you know, when he, uh, when he goes to the Lord in prayer. But it is good to know that you folks are moving on, making progress for the Lord. And, um, and so, again, I want to commend Brother David Allen. He's doing an excellent job. And boy, I'll tell you what, that is just wonderful, just wonderful to have a, have a good pastor and um, loves you, and visits with you and so forth and, and uh, there to minister and, and try to be a help as a man of God. And he's a good one. And Nicole and Sarah, I tell you, they, it's just wonderful. And we thank the Lord for what you're doing. You're doing a great, great job. Amen. I'm in the book of Luke tonight, and I'm going to try to expedite things as well. Uh, I've often said that I, my, all my sermons are like a roll of bologna. I can slice them off anywhere, you know. But I'll try to be brief. I know that some of you would rather eat than listen to me. <laughs> you know who would say that, you know. You open the door, Brother Mike, he knows how to jump right in there, you know. He's so encouraging, you know. You have to be humble around this brother. He just, he's there, you know, for you. Well, let me uh, ask you to turn, if you would, to um, Luke's Gospel and chapter number 22, Luke 22. And uh, this year is, uh, contextually, here we see that they've arrested Christ and uh, the Garden of Gethsemane, and they haul him off to these different six, six different trials, mock trials, uh, before crucifying him. And we break in here at verse number 54 of Luke, Chapter 22, then they then took they him, that's the Lord Jesus, and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. And that's going to be the subject in this text tonight. Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall of the court there, and they were sat down or seated together. Peter sat down among them, and a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire, earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of him, of them. And Peter said, Man, I'm not, I'm not, not with him. And after about the space of an hour, another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spoke, the, the rooster there, the cock crowed. And... Um, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, 
before the cock and the rooster crows, thou shalt deny me thrice, which is once, twice, thrice is the th third time. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Now let's pray together. Father, again, we give you praise and thanks that we could visit with the home folk here. Lord, we love these people. We served the Lord together with them for some 37 years. And Lord, what a wonderful journey and what a wonderful time we had uh, serving the Lord here on the mountaintop. And Lord, we just uh, thank you so much for David Allen and how he has moved in. And Lord, just had a wonderful transition from one pastor to another. And uh, we just rejoice over that. Such a blessing, such a blessing. And Lord, we want to pray and ask you tonight that you'd help us as we think about uh, the situation so many people are in today. And Lord, there's a solution for the situation that so many are in. And, uh, and we'll be looking at that in just a moment. But I just pray that you would Help us to realize that everyone is not steadfast in the service of the Lord. At this time in Peter's life, Lord, he was standing afar off when he should have been closer to the Lord. So would you help us tonight as we look into your precious word. And Lord, again, we rejoice for those who have been sick, that they're able to be with us here tonight. And we would want to pray for my brother and so forth. Now, We'll just give you thanks and praise for what you do in our hearts and lives tonight. In Jesus' name, we ask. Amen. I must tell Bobby Pettit, my brother Jerry, you know, we used to have the Roundup Day and the Western thing. Sometimes we'd have a pony who'd come out and so forth. And, and we just had a good time with the kids and getting putting them up on the horses. My brother Jerry would, uh, would uh, walk in. And he had concealed carry, you know, permits, and, and he had uh, his two six guns, you know, and they were real, and they were loaded, you know. And he just walk in, straight it in there, you know. He said, you tell Bobby Pettit and all my cowboy friends up there. Then I said, hello, you know. Duke's buddy said hello. He was a John Wayne fan, you know. But um, had a lot of good times, amen. Well, here we're looking now at the text. And the text tells that Peter, when the Lord Jesus was arrested and taken into the judgment hall here and uh, go through these mock trials, Peter, this particular time, denied the Lord Jesus. He, uh, he instead of identifying with the Lord Jesus and being there close by him, he, he stood afar off. Now, I believe what characterized Peter at this particular time in his life, I believe that this is what is so true of many Christians today. Now, we have had the COVID, you know, virus. We've had a lot of people, we've, a lot of people lost loved ones doing this thing. And listen, I know the world's been turned upside down in a number of sorts and ways, but, but there are a lot of people who have... And we thank God that some are able to live stream who are shut in, and it serves a great purpose for this. But a lot of people have used this thing as an excuse to play hooky on the Lord. I'm telling you, Ricky Vaden, listen, he set a marvelous example for 12 years of his school years. He never missed, listen, one day at school. He has to be one of the most brilliant guys around because, I mean, all of that, you know, all of that was given out. And, uh, and, uh, but that's being, that's being faithful. Amen. Well, anyway, you we have here that many people have gotten away from the Lord. For whatever reason, they've gotten away from the Lord. And rather than uh, being close to the Lord like they should, they should be, Many are walking far off. And you know, many people today, they are no longer interested in uh, and being satisfied with the manner of the Word of God that the Lord gives you and me. The Word of God is so very precious. You know, it's like a love letter. Every time we look into the precious Word of God and we are reminded of God's love 
and the sacrifice of his son, the Lord Jesus, took our place, suffered for our sins on the cross of Calvary. And uh, listen, the manna from heaven, if we can, we can still have, there are some people that still enjoy receiving the manna from, uh, from heaven as, as they look into the word of God. Some people are no longer committed to serve the Lord. And some of them, God has a solution, however, for those who are standing afar off, or walking afar off. And we find this um, answer, this solution to the problem is found in James chapter number 4. James, Peter, John, Jude, and Rev, okay? And... Uh, in James chapter 4 and verse number 8, here's the solution, um, or the, yes, yeah, the solution for the problem that many people have. Here's what James said, draw nigh, and the word nigh here means to draw near. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep, let your laughter be turned to mourning. And you enjoy the heaviness. So here is what it is. Many people have a problem because they're not close to the Lord like they used to be. And uh, rather than being identified with the Lord and being there, you see, close to the Lord, they, have, uh, they are standing now afar off, afar off. Now, I want to, to if I may, I want to... Uh, just to answer this question, how in the world do you draw nigh to God? Okay? And that's, that's the solution. It's so, the people who are standing forth, they need to draw nigh to God. Well, how do you do that? James says, draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to you, you see. Let me say, first of all, that there's a, there's a way to draw nigh to God. And... Um, we should ask the question tonight, do, do, I, do I need to draw uh, closer to the Lord? Do I need to draw nigh to God? Well, there's a way to draw nigh to God. If you are here tonight listening in, I don't know whether you're broadcasting tonight or not, but at any rate, you can draw nigh to God by claiming the promises of salvation from the Lord. Isn't it a wonderful thing? I mean, you could be so far away from the Lord and you could draw nigh to God, you see, by claiming God's promises. Now, there's a couple of promises he's made for us, but they're so wonderful. God promises to turn or to save anyone who will turn in repentance and, uh, and that they would call upon the Lord, believing and trusting in the cross work that Christ did for you and me. Now, it's been said that anyone can be saved uh, at any time, in any place. And it doesn't matter if a person is filled with self-righteousness like Saul of Tarsus was. It doesn't matter if they are outcast like uh, the publican was, Matt, Matt, the, the, the publican there. And then it doesn't matter if a person is filled with demons like the demoniac of Gadara in Mark chapter 5. And then, you know, a person can can be saved at any time then. Any, anyone can be saved at any time. And the Bible teaches you and me that, you know, it can be at night time, like when Nicodemus in John chapter 3 came and, and by night and he, and he saw the Lord Jesus, you see. And he was saved then. So the Lord talked to him about the new birth, being born again, and he became born again and serving for the Lord. Now, anyone can, can be saved at, at not only at night, but you can be saved during the noontime, a noonday uh, hour, you see. Uh, Saul of Tarsus was on his way to Damascus to bring back Christians, you see, and to turn them in and so forth and, and put them, feed them to the lions and so forth. And he got saved around noon. You can be saved in the evening. The Bible says that the woman of Sychar you know, she passed by Jacob's well there, and Jesus, you know, came, and she got saved by the well, you know. And it was about 6 p.m. when she did that. And you could not only be saved during the morning and, then, and noon or at night, but listen, 
you can be saved at midnight, you know, with people, a lot of people sleeping, you know, saved at midnight. And the Bible tells us when the Philippian jailer, you see, got saved, he got saved around midnight. God caused an earthquake to come and, uh, you know, open up the prison cells and uh, free the prisoners from their fetters on their hands and feet and so forth. It can, it can be at a cemetery that a person gets play, uh, saved, like the demoniac. It can be uh, on the desert, you know, as a place. That a person can be saved on the desert. A person can be saved in a cemetery. A person can be saved even in a house like Cornelius was in Acts chapter number 10, you see. When Peter took the gospel up there and shared that with him, you see, and he and his whole house got saved. Isn't that wonderful? Anybody can be saved at any time, at any place, if they'll simply come to repentance, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and call upon him, putting their faith and their trust in him. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now the Lord Jesus said this, that uh, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Paul is speaking this message to the Romans there. And he said, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then Romans chapter 10, verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not possibly or perhaps or maybe, but whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful, what a wonderful message, you see. And um, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now the Bible tells us that in Acts chapter number 16, that uh, there was this uh, Philippian jailer. He got saved around midnight. And uh, we, we talked about him a moment, but think about this. Paul and Silas had been in prison at Philippi for preaching the gospel. And they were moaning, going, no, they weren't. They were praying and praising God. We said, we don't understand what's going on, why it's happening, but we know that God's in control and God has the power and God is able to deliver us, meet our needs and whatever. Their trust and their faith was in the Lord, and they just sang praises. And about midnight, an earthquake came and opened the prison doors. And the jailer, you see, who had the charge over the prisoners, who would be responsible if just one prisoner escaped, it would mean his life. Well, he thought, surely, these guys are going to they're going to flee. They're going to get out of here. And he took his own sword, and he was going to fall upon his sword and take his life. And Paul said, wait a minute. He said, do thyself no harm, for we're all here. We're all here. And the Bible says that the Philippian jailer came and fell at the feet of Paul and Silas and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now, they didn't say, go join Faith Baptist Church on the mountain, you know, or this church or this denomination. They said to them, to, this is what they said to him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, you see, in thy house. And that's what he did. He got saved. Now, do you need to claim tonight the promise? Do you need to claim the promise, God's promise about salvation? Listen to me now. Being religious will not bring you close to the Lord. You could be a Muslim with religion up to your neck or any of the cultists, you see, that are involved in their religious efforts, but you see, it will not bring you closer to the Lord because you're religious. You might be in services or Bible study or whatever, but listen, it will not bring you closer to the Lord. Doing the best that you can do will not bring you close to the Lord. There's only one thing that will bring you close to the Lord. If you're not close to the Lord, you have no relationship with Him. Listen, and that is to... Come to repentance and receive the Lord as your Savior. Now, this is what the repentant thief did on the cross. When Christ was, was uh, crucified, 
there was two malefactors, one on each side. And one of them, he just cursed and carried on, you know. And, uh, but the other one was repentant. And he says, you know, uh, he looked to the Lord in faith and, uh, and in humility. And he said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And you know what? The Lord Jesus said, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. That's when paradise was in was Abraham's bosom in the heart of the earth, but it was changed to the third heaven where Paul went, you say, uh, about 14 years that he mentioned ago. And so you've got to be saved if you're going to uh, draw nigh to the Lord, you say. That's the only way to do it. Not through religion, not through good works, not through your own uh, self-righteous efforts, you say. Well, there's a way now to draw near to God if you happen to be out of fellowship with the Lord tonight and not walking close to the Lord. You can, you can get out of fellowship with the Lord. You say, well, how can I draw nigh to God if I'm out of fellowship with the Lord? Well, by being restored, doing what's necessary to be restored, you say, to fellowship with the Lord. You say, well, what is that? It is to repent of the things that you have done and to make them right with the Lord. Now, someone has said that you, if you can't find God, guess who's moved? Guess who's moved? Well, it hasn't been God. God's the same yesterday and today and forever, you see. And so people move away. They, they stop coming to church faithfully. They used to come to church, you know, Sunday morning, you know, Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night preaching, you know, Wednesday night Bible study and so forth and prayer meeting. But now they, they don't do that anymore. They, they, so many people today in this world have no excuse for standing and walking to fall off. But that's where they are. And they're not close to the Lord. And it's not going to get it any better until they realize that they need to draw nigh to God. And so in the case of people who are out of fellowship with the Lord, they can draw nigh to God if they'll just do what's necessary to be restored to fellowship. And this is what Peter did. The Bible says that Peter, he went out, verse 30 or 62 of, of Luke chapter 22, and Peter went out and he wept bitterly. Listen, he got his heart right with the Lord. He, he failed to identify himself with the Lord and, uh, and, and to take or to trust God on what would happen to him he denied the Lord, and the Lord knew and told him beforehand that he would deny him, you see, um, before the, the cock uh, would crow twice or, and so, or thrice. Now, he went out and he wept bitterly. Now, let me tell you about David. Let me tell you about David. Now, David, he, uh, everybody knows that he took off with Bathsheba, you know, and he was, uh, you know, committing adultery with Bathsheba, Uriah's uh, wife there. And I won't tell you what, he had an awful time because he was out of fellowship with the Lord. And to draw nigh to God, he needed to confess that to the Lord and make things right, you see. Um, and in Psalm 100, uh, uh, Chapter 51, you need not turn, but just listen. He said, Have mercy upon me, O God. According to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Why? For I acknowledge my, my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. He could not get them out of his sight, off his mind. Everywhere he turned, the Holy Spirit of God was convicting him. You have done wrong what you've done, and you need to make it right with God. And that's what he had to do, you see, to get things right with the Lord. And he says here, Purge me with hyssop and, and wash me that I might be clean. Make me hear joy and gladness. Hide thy, hide thy face from my sins. Create in me a clean spirit and, and a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away, you see. 
Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, you see. And so he realized that he had to do something to make things right with God. Now, let me tell you something now. Let me tell you something. David made things right with the Lord. Now, I want to tell you what you can do. You can lie to God. You can make excuses and lie to the preacher and to others as well. But this is what the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 6. It says, if we, say that we, if we say that we have fellowship with Him and we walk in darkness, in other words, if we're committing sin, listen, we lie and do not the truth. We're liars. We're just liars for saying that we're in fellowship with God when we are uh, tolerating sin in our lives. But on the other hand, listen to this. If we confess our sins, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's the difference. Some people say that they are walking with God in fellowship when they're not. They need to make things right with the Lord. And so, how do you do this? Well, to draw an eye to the Lord. You're going to be convicted of your sin if you're a born-again child of God. And when you're convicted, you need to make things right. Now, it is not enough to be convicted. It's not enough to, be, to admit that you have done wrongly. It's, listen, it's not enough, you see, to act repentant or be a hypocrite. It's, listen, it's not enough to do this. What we've got to do is make things right with the Lord. And true repentance is a change of heart and mind. A heart and mind. And the heart is meta melami, and the, and the mind is nueo. We've got to have a, a change of mind and heart, you see, about, about our sins. Our sins, three things we've got. The word, word repentance has to do with a change of mind and heart. What do we need to change? We need to change how we view ourselves. We are sinners, hell-bound, hell-deserving. We do not deserve the least of God's favor. All of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in the sight of a holy God, you see. So we need to have a change of heart and mind about our sin, our self-righteousness, and thirdly, about the Savior. Did you know that Jesus Christ is the only mediator between God and, and man? Jesus Christ. He's the only one. You, you can go to Mary. You can kneel down to statues. You can be involved in religious things. Listen, until it's up to your neck. But there's only one way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. The Bible says this in Acts 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. If you go to heaven, it not be because you were a member of a church or you were faithful in that church or you did this, you did that. Listen, if you go to heaven, it'll be because that you have put your trust, your trust and your faith in what Jesus has done for you and you are trusting him with your, with your soul. That, that's, what, that's the only thing that gets you to heaven, you see. And so... There must be then, if you draw nigh to God, you've got to do then uh, what will, what will uh, bring you close to the Lord. Now, let me hurry along here. There's a way also to, to um, draw nigh to God if you're not on talking terms with God. Now, think about this. Some people are not saved. Some people are out of fellowship. But some people are not on talking terms with the Lord. I remember when I came out of the military and got a job over in Eden in the meal. There was a guy over there. He would get out of sorts with his wife and they wouldn't even speak, you know. He wouldn't even speak to his wife. He would write little notes and put them around and tell his wife to do something. Isn't that childish? Isn't that immorality, uh, immaturity, you see, to do things like that? That's what he'd do, you know. He get mad, he wouldn't talk to her. Shameful, shameful. You can draw nigh to God if you're not on talking terms to God. 
if you will listen, if you will share the problems that you have with the Lord. He's the counselor. Share your problems with the Lord and make time to spend with the Lord with your problems, you say. Jesus said, Come to me, all ye that labor in heaven, labor, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. And when people aren't on talking terms with the Lord, with the Lord, let me tell you what's wrong with them. They're out of fellowship with the Lord. And they and they're not taking their problems to the Lord. We just cast our burdens upon the Lord for He cares for us. In Genesis chapter thirty two, and I'm hurrying along here, okay, Genesis chapter thirty two, Jacob, he had done awfully bad to his brother Esau. He stole the birthright, he lied, he put on, you know, the, the skins out of the you know to be like he wanted to have what he was a supplanter he wanted to have what someone else had it didn't belong to him he cheated you see and stole the birthright and blessing that was coming down for the firstborn to the firstborn to Esau and uh, and I'm going to tell you what he needed to talk with the Lord he had ample reasons you know to Go to the Lord and talk to the Lord and get some answers, you see. Because he had stolen the birthright. There were a number of things involved. And one of them was that the, 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 the elder son, you see, he got a double portion of everything. It was all handed down, a double portion to him, you see. He stole that. And I won't tell you what, he was in a bad way. And, and Esau was coming to meet him, and he was right scared out of his, uh, out of his boots, is what it was. Now, the Lord, Jacob was left alone, and uh, he wrestled with a man. And the man here is the angel of the Lord, who is the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ. He was, he was wrestling with the pre-incarnate Christ. And, 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 and he said, you see, The angel of the Lord Christ touched the hall of his thigh, and the hall of Jacob's thigh was out of joint, and as he wrestled with him. And he, and he, this angel of the Lord said, Let me go for the day breaks. And he said, I'll not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said, What is thy name? And he said, My name is Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be no more Jacob, but Israel, for a prince. Thou hast power with God with me. And, and Jacob answered him and, uh, and, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, what is thy name? And, uh, and, he, and, and he said, Jacob called his name Peniel, Peniel, El for God, Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And so he had to wrestle with the Lord, and it said that, look, listen here now, that Jacob's thigh, the God touched, listen, it shrank there. And he, in other words, the ball joint and the socket, you see, the angel of the Lord pulled it, inside, pulled it out of socket. Some of you probably have been playing ball when you was growing up, and, you know, you got an arm, you know, out of the socket, you know. And I won't tell you what, there's awful pain involved in that thing right there. And as a result of this, as a result of this, Jacob limped. He limped. You know what? It changed his walk. And there's some people that need to get alone with God and cast their burdens before the Lord and make things right with the Lord. You see? That's what they need to do. To get close to God. To be on talking terms with Him. And I'll tell you what. That's the way you can draw an eye to God. Now, one more point, and I'll be quick here with this. But there's a way to draw an eye to God if you are not living a life that pleases the Lord. Okay? Now, 
You can draw nigh to the Lord by just simply doing this. Line up your life with the Word of God. That's the way you, if you are living a life that's not pleasing the Lord, line up your life. Now, when we were working on the family center and different projects around here years ago, we had the most fun, a good time together. And um, I'm going to have a swig. You said you didn't drink out of it. Thank you. Thank you. I don't even drink after my wife. Yeah, I do. That's a lie. <laughs> Preachers will lie. You've got to watch them. <laughs> wow. Anybody thirsty? <laughs> We used to, you know, if you got a level, you can, you can find a plum, you know, by using a level. You just straighten that up and get your bead, you know, you find. But, you know, there are times when uh, you, you can use a plumb line. A plumb line is simply a cord or a string, and you've got a weight here, and most of them are, you know, they're just like pointed. And so you can drop that plumb line. And you can tell when something's lined up, it's straight. And you can work whether it's squares or studs or whatever you want to be, be using. Well, I want you to see this very quickly. In Amos chapter 7, verse 8, God spoke through the prophet Amos. And this is what he said. God speaking. Behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel... And I will not again pass over them. I'm not going to give them a free pass. It's done with. It's done with. God had contended with them and contended with them. And they would not line up their lives with the word of God. And guess what? The impending judgment came upon them. The Assyrians for the northern kingdom... Southern Kingdom, the Babylonian captivity for 70 years. But I want you to see this here. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 5 that Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. God took him. One day he was walking with God and whoosh, he's gone. Just like he's the type of the rapture. One of these days, the, the church is going home, you say, to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. But this is what the author of Hebrews said. But before his translation, he wasn't translating the Bible, before his transition, before his going to heaven, let me tell you what, let me tell you what, what it says. But before his transition, or his translation, he had this testimony. What was it? His testimony that any can, this is what it was, that he pleased God. You can draw nigh to God if your life isn't pleasing to the Lord, simply by lining up your life with what the Word of God says. You know when you're doing wrong. You've got the Word of God. All you've got to do is line up your life with what is honest and right and just and pure. Line it up according to the Word of God, and you'll be living a life that is pleasing to the Lord. Don't you want to have a life like that? To know you don't have to go home and worry about, you know, the things that you've done that day. Because you make time for God. You talk it over with God. You don't talk in terms with the Lord. You line up your life with the Word of God. Listen, and then you go out of this world that, with a testimony like Enoch had. that he pleased God. Now, I'm, I'm done, except to say this. I'm done, you know whether or not you are close to the Lord or walking afar off. Maybe tonight the Lord has spoken to your heart. This could be an altar to this tonight for you to get things right with the Lord. Maybe you're not on talking terms with the Lord. Maybe you're here tonight, you're not saved. Maybe you're saved, but you're out of fellowship with the Lord. And listen, you are not close to the Lord. But you can be. You can draw nigh to the Lord by doing these simple things. One of which is line up your life with the Word of God. Let's pray. Father, would you use this message now to speak to us?